Well, good afternoon. It's good to see you here on this uh, Wednesday afternoon here in the midst of this season of Advent as we work our way towards Christmas. I'm Pastor Jay. It's my week to lead the devotion today. And I wanted to open with what you know has become one of, I think, many folks' favorite Christmas songs of the season as we think about the mother of our Lord Mary. And so I wanted to begin with that song. I haven't played it in a while, so bear with me, but I think we'll be all right, though. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would someday walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy save our sons and daughters did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new this child that you'll deliver will soon deliver you mary did you know that your baby boy would give sight to the blind man mary did you know that your baby Calm the storms with his hand Did you know That your baby boy Has walked where angels drive When you kissed your little baby You kissed the face of God Mary, did you know The blind will see the deaf will hear, the dead will live again. The lame will leap, the dumb will speak, the praises of the Lamb. Mary, did you know that your baby boy is Lord of all creation? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will one day rule the nation? Did you know that your baby boy is heaven's perfect land? The sleeping child you're holding is the great I am. Sorry about that. I had to reach over and put my guitar away. Ever since that song came out, I think it's been one of many people's favorite songs about uh, Mary, the mother of our Lord, as we sing about Mary, Did You Know. But let us have a moment of prayer as we then will dive into scriptures. Loving and gracious God, again, we give you thanks for this day. It's a beautiful day with the sun shining, though we know it's a bit chilly outside. For during this time of year, as we celebrate your Lord's birth, uh, our Lord's birth, uh, the air grows cooler. Uh, though the sun shines brighter. And we pray and give thanks for that coming into our world. And pray to be with us today as we reflect upon that time when uh, the annunciation of his birth was made to, to a young maiden. Though she did not know what her life would entail, through the gift of your grace, she was able to find out. And so too, may we find out your call upon our lives. Amen. <clears throat> As I mentioned, ever since that song, Mary Did You Know, came out, I've always enjoyed listening to it. I, I may not be the best at playing it, but I, I do enjoy the song very much. But the thing is, when we hear it, it's, it's asking this question, Mary, did you know? But here in the midst of the Gospel of Luke, we, we have Mary's story, and in a way, she did know, as we will hear, as we hear her for full story here, beginning in the first chapter of the, or again, the, the, the yeah, it's part of the first chapter of the Gospel of Luke. It says, In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, again, Elizabeth was Mary's cousin, God sent the angel Gabriel to the Galilean village of Nazareth to a virgin engaged to be married to a man descended from David. His name was Joseph, and the virgin's name, Mary. Upon entering, Gabriel greeted her, Good morning! You're beautiful with God's beauty. 
beautiful, inside and out. God be with you. She was thoroughly shaken, wondering what was behind a greeting like that. But the angel assured her, Mary, you have nothing to fear. God has a surprise for you. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son and call his name Jesus. He will be great, be called son of the highest. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. He will rule Jacob's house forever, no end ever to his kingdom. Mary said to the angel, but how? I've never slept with a man. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the highest hover over you. Therefore, the child you bring to birth will be called Holy, Son of God. And did you know that your cousin Elizabeth conceived a son, old as she is? Everyone called her barren, and here she is, six months pregnant. Nothing, you see, is impossible for God. And Mary said, Yes, I see it all now. I'm the Lord's maid, ready to serve. Let it be with me, just as you say. Then the angel left her. Mary didn't waste a minute. She got up and traveled to a town in Judah in the hill country, straight to Zachariah's house, and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby in her womb leaped. She was filled with the Holy Spirit and sang out exuberantly, You're so blessed among women, and the baby in your womb also blessed. And why am I so blessed that the mother of my Lord visits me? The moment the sound of your greeting entered my ears, the babe in my womb skipped like a lamb for sheer joy. Blessed woman who believed what God said, believed every word would come true. And Mary said, I'm bursting with good news. I'm dancing to the song of my Savior God. God took one look at me and look what happened. I'm the most fortunate woman on earth. What God has done for me will never be forgotten. The God whose very name is holy, set apart from all others. His mercy flows in wave after wave on those who are in awe before him. He bared his arm and showed his strength, scattered the bluffing braggarts. He knocked tyrants off their high horses, pulled victims up out of the mud. The starving poor sat down to a banquet. banquet. The callous rich were left out in the cold. He embraced his chosen child Israel. He remembered and piled on the mercies, piled them high. It's exactly what he promised, beginning with Abraham right up till now. My sisters and brothers, that's the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. The gospel of that moment when Mary found that she would be the one to bear God into our world, bring forth this Son of God that would change everything. You know, can you imagine what it would have liked to have been 14? And I remember when I was 14, I was running around, silly, probably fighting a little bit of acne, you know, all those things that come with those teenage, those awkward years. How would have I responded if an angel came to me and said something miraculous was going to happen to me? Well, I don't know about you, but I can't imagine what I would have done. But this little maiden, a 14-year-old young girl, is the one the angel came to. Came to and said, be not afraid. That indeed you would be the one to be the vessel of God's blessings for the world. Of course, Mary you know, asked, how could this happen? You know, I've never been with a man. I, uh, I'm a virgin. But of course, the angel reminds her that Everything, anything is possible for God. And in that moment then she recognized that, yes, even though she was inadequate, even though she couldn't imagine what this would be like, how could she be one, the one to do that? That if God wanted her, she would be available. And said, as it would be with you, so should it be with me. You know, I'll be your servant. Let it be with me according to your will. And indeed, I think the angel does come to all of us with that same question. Maybe not that we would have, of course, a, a virgin birth or some miracle in our life. But I think God does call all of us to uh, be a part of his plan, to enter into our role in his plan for the redemption of the world. Mary's role was to give birth to Jesus, to bring him into the world there in Bethlehem of Galilee. And then all that has happened after that are 
Again, Eastern Orthodox uh, sisters and brothers call her the Theotokos, the, the bearer of God, a very special role. But even if our role seems much more minor than that, we all have that role. God calls all of us too. And I think God calls us to be bearers of his good news, bearers of the Christ, bearers of this gospel out into the world. We're not Marys, of course, but we are bearers and heralds of that good news. And exactly what is that good news? Well, part of that good news is what happened next in the story. For when Mary went to see her cousin Elizabeth and John the Baptist leaped in Elizabeth's womb and Elizabeth recognized Mary for who she was, the bearer of Christ into the world. Mary then burst into this song a song we call the Magnificat. Again, I read it in the contemporary language from Eugene Peterson's Gospel, The Message. <coughs> I like that kind of new version sometimes to hear these stories or these poems and things that we hear over and over and over again. But that song that she sang was a message of hope, a message of hope for the poor and, the, and what was to come, a message that talks about turning the world upside down, a world in which the lowly are lifted up and the mighty are knocked off their high horses or brought down from their thrones. A place where the poor are fed good things and the rich are sent empty away. A message that is challenging to us in our world today. Challenging us as those who have more to, to give. Challenging those of us that are at the top. We here in the first world. Uh, to recognize the needs of our neighbors, the third world, recognizing that God has called us to a much more egalitarian way, a way in which all have a place and which all have what they need. Maybe a pipe dream, it seems, in our world today, but I think to something to which we aspire and work towards, something that we open ourselves to be a part of when we respond to Mary, yes, I respond as Mary to God that, yes, be it with me as you would have. Help me to be and find my part in your role in bringing about this beautiful thing uh, that's called the kingdom of God. This beautiful thing in which all have a place. The beautiful place when the, the re re roles are reversed and the, the mighty and the haughty are put aside and the, the lowly and the burdened are lifted up. It seems like a, a radical message. But, you know, it's a message I see that goes back all the way through Scripture. Jesus and God are all the time talking about lifting the lowly and setting aside and bringing down the empires of our world. Started back again, I think, with the early uh, lady who, uh, who Mary was named after, Miriam. If you remember Miriam's song about after they, uh, the exodus and the slaves were brought forth and crossed uh, you know, the, the river to go toward the Holy Land. There's this great song of praise as Pharaoh's armies are, are defeated and the empire which oppressed them is put aside. It's the very same thing that Mary is singing about. The turning of the tables of the mighty being put down and the lowly being left up. Again, I'm not thinking it needs to be violent or anything like that, but I think there's, there's a movement and a way to do that. And that's what makes this gospel message of Mary so uh, subversive because it's challenging those powers that be. I think of Oscar Romero, the uh, famed bishop down in El Salvador who, who just spoke this message in the midst of that country and the, was shot down and martyred because it was so challenging to the powers that be. I think God calls us to be a, a voice of hope for the powerless, calls us to be the ones that that challenge the, uh, the nationalism, challenge those things that um, would put down the lowly because God's role is to lift them up and those that seek power and prestige to be set aside. I know it's a hard message, but it's also a beautiful one because it recognizes our equality with each other and that God loves us all and wants us to be in community together. May we sing the songs as Mary does, because as we know, unlike the song I just sang, Mary did know, because the angel came and told her, and then through her, she told us.
Thanks be to God. Amen. For my closing song, I wanted to do, and it's not really a Christmas song. I got to get my guitar. I set my stand too far over. I apologize for that. This is an old one from our hymnal. Uh, and it talks again about how God overthrows the powerful and lifts up the lowly because it comes from that time when God delivered his people. Pharaoh's army got drowned. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. One of these mornings, bright and fair, they're gonna take my wings and cleave the air. Pharaoh's army got drowned. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. Oh, Mary, don't you weep, don't you mourn. Oh, Mary, don't you weep, don't you mourn. Pharaoh's army got drowned. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. When I get to heaven, gonna sing and shout. Ain't nobody gonna turn me out. Pharaoh's army got drowned. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. But oh, Mary, don't you weep, don't you mourn. Oh, Mary, don't you weep, don't you mourn. Pharaoh's army got drowned. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. When I get to heaven, gonna put on my shoes. Gonna run around about and spread the news. Pharaoh's army got drowned. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. So, oh, Mary, don't you weep, don't you mourn. Oh, Mary, don't you weep, don't you mourn. Pharaoh's army got drowned. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. When I get to heaven, gonna sing and shout. Ain't nobody gonna turn me out This Pharaoh's army got drowned Oh, Mary, don't you weep Oh, Mary, don't you weep, don't you mourn Oh, Mary, don't you weep, don't you mourn Pharaoh's army got drowned Oh, Mary, don't you weep May we go forth into this world this day to sing that news that good news for all people, that the lowly will be lifted up, the mighty set aside, and God's love will reign supreme. Go, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.